In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to build a slowly changing dimension pattern with an Azure Data Factory. I'm going to use mapping data flows with an ADF to do that. So let me start with the pipeline, uh, and I'll still go over here to the pipeline. Now the pipeline is going to be a very simple one activity pipeline, which is my data flow activity. So let me go back to that data flow now. And I'm going to walk you through the logic and how to build this. But before I do, I want to show you the data, the schemas, and the scenario. I'm going to use AdventureWorks. I'm going to use the product table. The idea would be that you have an OLTP uh, database. In this case, I have Azure SQL database for my source and my sync. And what you'll do is you will run your um, dimension member updates you know, hourly or daily, whatever your schedule may be. And you want to look for changes in that source, in that source table. And then you'll load up your staging table. So the idea is to go to staging first and have that be the bridge between your OLTP and your target data warehouse analytical schemas. So I'm not going to get to uh, loading the analytical schema here in this um, <clears throat> in this demo. I'll record a subsequent video to show you that. But the key point here is to show you how to build and detect changes within those sources and then to be able to load up a staging table to make it ready for uh, your star schema. So I'm going to use the methodology of a slow changing dimension type 1, which means I'm going to overwrite the rows in the staging table. Um, and what that means is that any time that a attribute changes that I'm interested in, I will update that existing row. I'm not going to create a new row like a type 2 would uh, infer. And when a new row comes in, obviously, from the products table, then I'll add a new row <clears throat> to my staging table. So my source is going to be the product table from the AdventureWorks OTP um, database. So you probably have seen this before. And then my staging schema is going to have the attributes in there that I'm interested in to load into my target data warehouse dimension table. Now I'm only picking a few columns from a few attributes I'm interested in from my source. So I want the ID of the products, I want the name, product number, color, standard cost, list price. Then I've added some additional fields. These fields are going to be for tracking in my, e my ETL um, processes. I have the uh, inserted date, the last updated date. These are actually timestamps, so date and time. And then I have a column called hash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use SHA, um, the, uh, such as the SHA hashing algorithm to create a hash based on the fields I'm interested in. So how do you do that in data flow? Let's take a look. So the key to this is having the, um, using the SHA function within um, the data flow expression. So this is a derived column transformation and I'm, uh, I'm just picking these three columns for changes. You could you know, obviously add or subtract whatever columns you're interested in, but what, what this hashing does is this is any time that a, col that a uh, value changes in any of these columns that you have here in your function, then a change will be detected because the hash will change. So I'm just for this demo, I picked name, product number, and color. All right. My two sources are the, um, the SQL products table from uh, AdventureWorks. Uh, and this one already has the hash, so this would be the um, this would actually be from the staging table, and then here I have the SQL products OTP source because it has no hash. So this is staging with hash, and this is staging because it has no hash. What I can do then is I will create a hash on the OLTP to see it, to help detect if there's a change. I'm going to use the exists transformation to look for any uh, differences. So the left hand side is going to be the uh, newly created hash value. The right hand side is the original source from the OLTP system, which uh, um, will have a hash on it that was uh, that was created. So what that means is I will be able to compare to see when something has changed. Now I have a lookup after this, and the reason for the lookup is because I'm on the row with the um, SQL product, which means I do not have the additional fields that I want, like the inserted and updated date. So I'll do a lookup back to that um, the, uh, the the table with the hash value, which is staging, and use the product ID to link those back together. Now I have all the columns I want. Within data flow, you can see if you have all the columns you want by looking at the metadata. And I have 26 columns. I'm going to have everything I need. I've got the attributes I want for my staging and for my dimension member, and then I have the additional fields like the inserted and updated. Now, those inserted and updated came from the existing staging table. So what I'm going to have to do is I want to um, create a new inserted and new updated value. And I'm going to use the current timestamp to do that. But with inserted, I don't always want to overwrite inserted because if inserted already has a value, then you can't change that, right? That should be a write once and don't update. So I'm checking to see first if it's null. I will only update with the current timestamp for the inserted field if it does not already exist. Updated will always change because anytime you write an update, to your staging table, you want to indicate that there is a new timestamp on that for tracking. 
So to do the updates within Dataflow, you have to use the alter row uh, when you're writing to a database. So I'm going to say upsert everything. And the reason I'm upsetting everything is because by this point, once you've gone past your exists, the only thing that's going to pass through because of the exists clause, the only thing that's going to pass through is going to be call, uh, rows that are new or updated. So I just say true. So everything that passes through will get an upsert. The upsert makes it real easy for me now. This will automatically, within the data flow, either insert or update that row. All I have to do now on my sync is write back to that staging table. It's now going to be the staging table with hash because it has a hash. I'm going to say upsert. So allow upserts. That's all I want to do. The key to look to know whether or not it's going to be a update or an insert is going to be the product ID. Okay? That's whether it exists or not. If it doesn't, it inserts. If it does, it updates. Very, very simple. Makes it very quick and easy. My mapping is going to be just those columns, and everything is already mapped for me. And um, I will be, actually, there's one thing I'm going to change. I don't want this. I want to insert the new date for these. And that's fine. So this just automatically picks the incoming names. But I want to use the updated ones. I want to use the insert that I created, which is going to be a new insert if it's new, or it's going to uh, retain the old value if it was already inserted. And then new update timestamp. All right, that's basically it. So let's take a look at running these and, and let's see what happens. So now within um, Data Factory, um, Dataflow, to actually execute this to update the files and tables and everything else, you have to run from the pipeline debug. If you use the debug mode here within Dataflow, which is essentially looking at data preview, you only look at a snapshot of the data. You don't actually execute the sync. We need to actually write this data to make this work. So I'm going to stay in debug mode. I have debug on, but I'm in my pipeline. So I'm going to go ahead and, and click debug, and let's let this guy spin up and run. And what's going to happen then is this... Uh, my staging table, which currently has no rows in it, is now going to go, it's going to go in, it's going to look for the updates from the source, from the OLTP source. And since I'm hashing on that and comparing those values against the existing values in my staging table, it will write everything because it's upsurs. Everything will get written, all new rows, because there is nothing in it now. I already truncated the table. So since there's nothing in it, all rows from that source are going to get written here, and it's going to have the columns that I'm looking for, the attributes I need. The insert and update will be identical because these are all brand new. So I have that timestamp, uh, the current timestamp from my expression in the derived column, and I also use a derived column for hashing. So you see the hash value. The hash value is based on those three columns that I chose that I'm interested in for attributes. All right, so so far so good. Let's go back into our uh, data flow. Let's let this guy finish. All right, and that is finished. We can always look at the um, at the execution plan if we'd like to know the timings of everything that, that occurred within the data flow. And if you click on the sync, you can see the, the lineage of the, for example, um, let's take a look at the lineage for the DW hash. And you can see it came from these three columns. So you can always look to see your lineage to say that my hashing value is based on these columns. If anything changes in these columns, <clears throat> uh, this is going to indicate a change in my source. And you can see the partitioning was set by Spark automatically, so these are the petitions, the, the partitions. Not exactly perfectly um, linear across those partitions, so you could always set your own key values if you'd like a, a more linear uh, sort of a partitioning of your data. But everything worked just fine for this demo. Okay, great. So the next thing we want to do, now that we have the new values and we have our staging table, you can always take this now from this point on and move to the next step, which is to load your uh, dimension model. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to show you what happens when things change. So let's go ahead and add a new row to our source LTP. So when, in, when you're running these, ELT, these ETL patterns and you have a new row added, you want to pick that up and add that to your staging. So I just added a new row. I called it My Nice Bike. <clears throat> and now when I execute my uh, exact same data flow, so no changes occur because I'm upserting, I'm checking with exists, I'm creating hashes. So I didn't change anything. I just trigger this or I run this on a schedule. And the next time it runs and something was added in the OLTP source in the database, this will automatically pick it up. So what's going to happen now is that new row called my nice bike, which is going to be available to me in my um, source LTP. Let's take a look at it. Just make sure it's there. Okay, there it is. That's the source. Now that should get it written automatically into my staging. So nothing else will get changed, but it will have detected that new row. And there it is. And the timestamp, as you can see, is a little bit later than the uh, initial inserts. None of the other dates changed. Only the new one got added. 
Very good. Now let's see what happens when we go to modify a, um, an existing row. So no change will be needed. All we have to do is uh, just rerun, but first I have to update a row. So let's go ahead and update. What we'll do is we'll take um, 999, this product right here, this bike. We'll change its color to, um, uh, let's just change it to red. All right, and let's go ahead and run our data flow pipeline. Boom. Let's go back into our SSMS. Let's take a look at the um, at the source to make sure that we did get our change updated. There it is, red. Now, as this runs and checks the hashes against that, it should say that that is when the columns is looking for a change. So the hash value will change, which will mean that when I select that from my staging table, I should now see red. Four nine nine nine, and there it is. There you go. So that's how you build a slow changing dimension pattern within Data Factory. Thanks for watching.